I've always played video games, I guess, and always liked video games. You know, it's a very visual medium, and yet, visually, I think the world of video games is quite conservative. I'm from a, a, a kind of graphic art illustration background. There were lots of video games that I loved, but they didn't look much like the sort of visual art stuff that I love. And it was kind of a no-brainer, really, to, to want to get involved with making them. Dick sent me a, a, a picture as a, as a possible start for a video game. I think he said something like, hey, let's make a video game, I've drawn you a picture. And if he'd had any sense, he would have said, no, no, I don't want to. <laughs> but, uh, but he said yes, unfortunately. And, uh, and, it, and that thing was the initial seed that became, uh, that became Ho Hokum. Oh, this is a, this is a classic page of this is definitely, telephone doodle. This is it? definitely either a meeting or a telephone doodle here, but it kind of spills out into a more formal character design thing. It's like there's a phase where you're drawing lots of repetitive abstract things, which gradually morph into slightly more tangible things. Here's stuff that's like really specific from when we were making the kite worlds bit of the game, like there's guys flying kites. It's just nothing. It's just a little scribble. But it's weird, isn't it? Maybe that's the first time. So a lot of people ask about why this game has this particular look to it and where the art style comes from. The honest answer is it, it's pretty much how I draw. It's vector art, which means it has a clean edge look to it. I do it in such a way that there's a, there's a slight wonkiness to everything. When you look closely at the art in Ho Hokum, everything is a little bit wobbly. Because there are so many drawings, there's so much art and animation in Ho Hokum, we've had to do a lot of work to ensure that we can fit all of those characters and all of those animations into memory while still retaining that sense of it being really hand-drawn and, and alive. I remember when I first saw this, and I think this might have been the first thing you animated, I thought, oh God, that's weird. That's not how I would have imagined them being. I, I would have imagined them all being like seaweed underwater. But the way you've done them, it's really like, it's got a real kind of like, it's a bit like out of control in a way that I really like. The animators have done things that we didn't expect them to do at all. Dick will draw something and a gameplay mechanic will come out of a drawing in a way that Dick didn't necessarily intend. Often I draw stuff and I have no idea what the gameplay would be. I, I quite like to surprise Ricky with that and go, I've drawn this thing, do you think this could be in the game? Have you got any kind of ideas for what might happen in this place? Or um, sometimes uh, you know, I will program a strange little toy made with circles and I'll send that to Dick and then he'll think about what that can be in a, in a figurative sense and give it some sort of personality or make it a character. You know, because when you're making a game, you're making a piece of art and the visual art side of it should be, I think, inherently part of that, not just a finish. Dick never really worked on a video game, never especially technical person, and so there were, some, there were certain practicalities about making a video game that he had to wrap his brain around. Initially, I'm the guy that draws and he's the guy that programs, and between us we try and make a game together. But actually, as the relationship's matured, as, it, as it's gone on, it's not so much about the things that we can and can't do, it's just about the friendship and the thing that we're making together. Having that person who is coming from outside and didn't bring all the kind of baggage and assumptions that people who work in video games all the time have kind of forced me to reevaluate a lot of the things that I just accepted as being true. There's lots of things which I've got a real almost like phobia of that are, that are quite common within visual art and also very much within video games. Shininess and, and, and flares and things that glow. It's ubiquitous within video games and I will have none of that in my art. I see those things as being like the equivalent of sugar and salt in food. They're, they're both things that taste nice, but unfortunately we live in a world where people just, without really thinking about it too much, just put sugar and salt into all food. Maybe my art's a bit more like having some nice fresh vegetables. Station.